the Philippine Military Academy. Transformation is a way of life. Every year, young men and women, mostly fresh out of high schools across the country, embark on this unique journey. Starting out as civilians with raw intellectual and physical assets, they undergo a regimen that would decimate their ranks in the next four years. Those who survive do not just graduate, they emerge as a unique breed of leaders. Formally established in December 1935, through the National Defense Act of the Philippine Commonwealth, the PMA traces its roots to the short-lived Academia Militar, created under the First Philippine Republic in 1898. Under American colonial rule, formal military training was revived in 1905. An officer's school later came to be known as the Philippine Constabulary Academy, based in Baguio City. The PMA supplanted the Constabulary School and replaced its three-year curriculum with a four-year Bachelor of Science program. World War II temporarily halted PMA operations, forcing the advanced graduation of the classes of 1942 and 1943 for deployment to actual combat. In 1947, ten months after the post-war Philippine Republic was inaugurated, the PMA reopened at Camp Henry T. Allen in Baguio City. Three years later, the Academy moved to a sprawling fort in nearby Loacan, fittingly named after the heroic revolutionary general Gregorio del Pilar. The PMA would remain an all-male institution until 1993, when it admitted its first female cadets in accordance with Republic Act 7192. In 2018, the PMA synchronized its calendar with that of the Department of Education under the K-12 program. Over the years, the PMA has refined a holistic program for developing cadets in body, mind and spirit to become exemplary leaders in the military and beyond. The program encompasses character formation, balanced academics, military leadership, and intense physical training. The distinct nature of the PMA Leadership Development Program is etched in the traditions that guide cadets from day one to graduation. First-year cadets are called fourth-class men or plebes, consisting of above-average youths picked from a national pool of qualified examinees. Plebes are jolted out of their civilian comfort zones upon their reception at the PMA. This is followed by eight weeks of beast barracks when they learn right off the bat if they have what it takes to imbibe military discipline. In essence, they are made to realize that before becoming leaders, they must know how to be good followers within the chain of command. Surviving that tough phase qualifies cadets for incorporation into the cadet corps after two months. Each plebe is then assigned to the company where he or she will belong for the next four years. But the pressure from the upper class men does not stop there. Throughout their first year, the plebes have to constantly prove themselves worthy. More than three months into that grueling daily grind inside and outside the classroom, their hard work and perseverance finally pay off. The emotional high point of the first academic term is the recognition ceremony, signifying their formal acceptance to the core. On their second year, the cadets are dubbed third-class men or yearlings. The year starts with soldier team development training to set their minds on a collegial plane. Free of ritual harassment, yearlings begin to focus on developing their academic military and physical prowess while building character and personal relationships. They also gain their first experience of leadership as buddies to the plebes. As buddies, they are both the plebes' cadet role models and behavior monitors, ensuring that the new cadets meet the standards of the academy. Cadets who get to third year 
are known as second-class men or cows. Their term begins with a month-long cruise. This gives the cows another opportunity for bonding while they enjoy the sights along the Philippines' northwestern coast, in the major southern islands, or in the neighboring ports of Asia. Within the cadet chain of command, they are designated as squad leaders. In the occasional absence of the graduating class, the cows assume responsibility for running the cadet corps. In preparation for this role, they undergo leadership development training during the summer session. During the main school year, individual competition to excel in every aspect of training yields distinct ranks in academic performance. A parallel development in ranking takes place in the cadet hierarchy as well. On their final year in the academy, cadets earn the right to be called first-class men or firsties. As the ruling class, they occupy the major positions of responsibility in the cadet chain of command, with a class baron at the apex. In addition to the many privileges they enjoy, the firsties are placed in charge of various committees, clubs and core squads. More specialized academic subjects gear them up for their eventual commission as officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Upon their graduation from the academy, they would have proudly completed a journey of leadership like nowhere else in the country. Top cadets get to represent the PMA in local and international youth conferences on leadership and related themes. Those who qualify as PMA cadets also have opportunities to prove their mettle in defense and military academies overseas. Taking advantage of international study and exchange programs, some outstanding PMA cadets have distinguished themselves in training programs in the United States, Canada, Australia, Japan, and South Korea. Most important of all the aspects of training, PMA graduates are grounded in the time-honored values of courage, integrity, and loyalty. In all these diverse ways, the Philippine Military Academy leaves an indelible, holistic imprint on each of its graduates. By molding exemplary young men and women year after year. In turn, the young Filipinos chosen to embark on that unique journey relish the challenge to transform themselves into multifaceted leaders for the rest of their lives.